welcome back to another episode of the She's Making an Impact podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Ngom. Today, you get to sit on an on-air coaching session with one of our Rockstar Activate students. We got Michelle here. This is something that, that it's really just a way for me to be able to pour into our Activate students and help them grow their business on. Um, they get some one-on-one time with me you get to sit in on that session and kind of hear how I would coach them. Um, and yeah, I'm excited. So if you want to apply for activate, just make sure to go to Rachel and forward slash activate. And we can chat and see if it'll be a good fit for you. Michelle, how's it going? Pretty lady. It is going great. Rachel, how are you doing? I am good. So what, what do you need for me today? How can I best support you in our time together? Well, I am planning a launch for an online course about CBD, how to use it, why it works, you know, all all of the good stuff about it. And I have that launch set for June 28th. Okay. And I am hoping that um, during that time, I will be able to um, figure out, you know, the best way to host webinars, the best way to really get that approach going to, to, you know, be able to collect the proper emails for people who are interested in this type of course. And um, so one of the big questions I have is I've been doing like weekly lives kind of leading up to this about essential oils and how to use them safely, uh, because that's going to be one of my bonuses. And so I'm wondering what is the best way to host those lives and be able to collect emails during those lives so it's, so it's going to be people who are interested in what I'm offering. Um, you know, I've, I've gone live and I've, you know, I've said like, Hey, I'm going to do this live at one o'clock and then I'll go in my Facebook group and do the live at one o'clock. And some people can't find, they can't find the information. They can't find me. Um, so I'm just kind of wondering what is the best way to set that process up where do I do it? It seems to be like when I post it in the group, then it goes into the discussion part of it instead of like in the group and it gets a little confusing. Okay. So what I would do is create an event for each live. This is something we have Lizzie on our team do for us. And so when I click to go live for this, I just clicked, I'm going live on my page. And I'm also, it. Facebook just says, click on this event. Like, is the, are you going live for this event? So I just clicked it. People that RSVP'd for that event, they see it. Um, and then you can also share it into your group. So we have this shared into the She's Making an Impact Facebook group. Hey, everybody. Um, and you can also host a watch party. And so after the live is done, you can host a watch party. So people who weren't on live with you can watch that recording. Okay. Okay, awesome. And so from there, I can, if, if I can save that, I can like upload it onto my computer into like um, Vimeo. I, I never say that right. Is it, is it Vimeo? Vimeo. Vimeo. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, Cause I, I just got a new account with them. Um, Cause my, my VA is telling me that's the easiest way to embed into everything. And so I'm, you know, that's what I'm going to start doing. And I've, I've been really hesitant about getting online and sharing, you know, gotcha. and I just, it's, it get, you know, it's, it's a little shy. I get a little shy sometimes, or I feel shy for the first minute or two, but once I get going, it's great. It's just totally. getting it out there is like, you know, um, so I'm so, really trying to push past that. A question for you. This is free content that you're sharing, that you're trying to grow your email list and build a relationship with your audience. Correct. Correct. I would put it on YouTube instead YouTube. of Vimeo. Okay. Totally. Yeah. yeah. Cause it's a searchable platform. And so I would look at keywords using the correct keywords on YouTube. Do you know how to do that? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I, I have I, keywords for YouTube. Is that the same as same, same thing, basically. Okay. Yeah. Basically the same thing. And I think with your niche as what it is, like that's just growing in popularity. So you will really have a good chance to rank. I mean, my fitness YouTube videos are still getting views and still like, it's just crazy. It's, it's like Pinterest in your blog. It's just an evergreen traffic source. And so I would definitely take advantage of it. If you're creating content already, put it on YouTube. Okay. Awesome. Will do. Yeah. yeah. So I have a big question and, and I didn't even realize that this was something I'm, that I struggle with, but, you know, going through my notes today of like, okay, what, what are my questions going to be? What is it that I can't figure out right now? Yeah. Um, I think I get hung up on, do I speak to people who are already taking CBD and are using someone else's brand? And I want to let them know that I have, I truly have the 
closest relationship to the farmers you can have. Like I helped them, I, go, I went to the field last year and helped them harvest. It was amazing. And, you know, so like, do, I, do I reach out to people who already are using CBD and try to pull them into my brand so that, you know, they can have a good trusted source? Or am I, should I be aiming for people who have never actually tried CBD, but they're interested in holistic health? Like, how do I um, figure out who I'm speaking to? It, it depends. If it were me, I would be targeting the people that don't, they're not taking it yet. And okay. they're curious about it and they're interested in holistic health. That's personally what I would do. Cause a lot of times they might have brand loyalty and be taking it with another brand and they love where they're at. So it's harder to pull them away and show why you're better, you know? Okay. And so your language definitely is different because they don't, they might not know why they should take CBD, you know? Mm-hmm. And so you're, everything that you're going to do online will be different than someone who's already taking it. Okay. Yeah, I think I've had that cloud, you know, that's been a cloudy area for me. So it's been hard to clarify my message. Yeah. So it's just a matter of where are they at and you have to meet them where they're at. So they're aware they are they aware that they have a problem and that they need CBD. Right. So you have to think like, are they problem aware? Are they solution aware? And where can you meet them? So like if you're targeting me. I know that I have like different joint pains and things that CBD would benefit, but do I know that CBD could help me? So you would speak a little bit different to me than if I already know about CBD and I know it can help me, you know? So it's just different language. Okay. Yeah. That, that really helps because that's, I I always, again, I get my message a little bit confused because I do use some of the bigger terms for people who are already familiar and they message me and they're like, hey, so how much, you know, kind of a dial is in such and such. And so there are people out there who already know the language, but, but yeah, that's really, um, that's where it gets murky. So yeah, I'm, that really will help a lot because now I know where to, it's, where to look at. It's like the curse of knowledge, right? Like, yeah. you know, so much and your ideal customer, they don't know anything. Right. And so you got to really dumb it down for them and speak it like that kindergarten level and really spell it out. So that whatever you just said, I don't know. And I know what CBD is. And so you got to make it really, really simple for them to understand. Gotcha. Yes. That, that is definitely somewhere that I struggle. <laughs> yeah. So I will, I will start simplifying. But that, and that really, again, that does make it easier knowing I'm speaking to someone who's not tried it before, you know, who's exactly. just, yeah, they're like, curious. Someone talking about it and I have all the reasons while everyone's talking about it, you know, so just yeah. get that out there. Okay. Okay. Um, so I guess that another thing I'm, you know, getting ready for this launch, um, collecting emails. Like I, I, you know, I have, I have a few hundred emails on the list, but I would like a thousand, you know, <laughs> like I, I want to broaden that. And a lot of the emails I have are from my local community because um, people gave me their email addresses at the farmer's market where I, I work every Saturday, you know, and I love those relationships. They're very nurturing. They get to ask me all their questions in person. And obviously I can't do that for the entire nation. So <laughs> how do I become like a national level educator um, and how do I get out there? You know, because there, I, I just think of people like my mom who are in so much pain and in two weeks, you know, I mean, if we communicated, if, if I was able to reach them and they tried it in two or three weeks, they could feel so much better. Like so much of their pain would be relieved. How do I, you know, like, how do I find them? How do I get Are that you out? creating content every week? No, no. I'm okay. Not. Then that's where you need to start is thinking, what are these people searching for? So are they searching for natural ways to alleviate pain and create blog posts and content centered around that? That way, when they're searching for something, they're going to find you. Okay. And should I, should I include some other tips? You know, like I I do know turmeric can be beneficial. Like, you know, do I include some other holistic things in there or do I just strictly talk about my stay in my lane? I would stay in your lane. That's going to help you become known as that go-to expert a lot quicker. And then have you been reading the book of the month traffic secrets? I'm waiting for it in the mail. 
Um, okay. So it hasn't gotten there yet. Okay. So that's something I really want you to dive into. He talks a lot about what we already talk about in the medium publicity module of helping you get in front of other people's audiences, but having that be a main focus. And so different podcasts that you can get on holistic health podcasts. Have you been pitching to get on those? Not recently. Um, so I've, we I've need thought- to. Yeah. Get back to the, get back to the pitching podcast. I mean, I love doing them. And once I get on there, like they always come back and thank me and they're like, Oh my gosh, you know, I had no idea you could use CBD like that. I yeah. know. They're like, um, I had two nurses, uh, they have a podcast and they interviewed me and they were like, we finally, they're like, we were so glad that we were able to interview you. They're like, we couldn't find a good source for essential oil information. Mm-hmm. And like, I totally cracked them up because, you know, they expected me to be like, so into oils that I said it fixed everything. And I was like, no, there's actually jokes among the aromatherapists in the community. Like if your arm falls off, just sprinkle some lavender on it and grow right back. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah. We just had a really good time and they're like, thank you for being that in between that we really needed, you know, how to use it. And yet it can't fix like the entire world, you know, (laughs) by the way, I am diffusing your joyful Jubilee blend that you gave me in our kitchen right now, as I was tidying up, where can people buy your CBD and essential oils if they're listening and they want to get it? Sure. Jubileewellness.com. And I, I launched my own line two years ago and I never knew that would be possible, but the stars aligned and it's happening and it's been happening. And I'm, I just love what I'm doing. It's, it's wonderful. So cool. I, yeah. And your, your oils are just like top notch. So I use them literally like every day. Cause I put the lavender on the little laundry balls and put that in the dryer and like for everything. <laughs> yes. I, I tell you why, I, when I first fell in love with oils, I was like, where's, where did this magic come from? Yeah. And I, you know, I was buying from a big LM and big MLM. And I, I never thought in a million years, I would have access to the same quality, if not better. Like I get to work with some of the smaller farmers. My lavender comes from the Northwest, like the Pacific area. And like, I, I never knew that I, I would be, you know, be able to do that. So when, when that fell in my lap, I was like, I'm running with that. And I just never look back. I love it. So cool. Okay. So podcasts. Yes. Um, okay. and then think our, is your ideal client on YouTube? Yes, I would say they absolutely are. Are there any big holistic health YouTube channels that you could pitch to see, could we do a collaboration? Like, could I jump on and create a video with you teaching your audience about this? That is a great idea, especially since I just started a, um, um, affiliate program. Mm -hmm. So, um, yes, if you reach out to them and be like, Hey, you can get whatever percentage that you're offering. That'll be huge. That creates such a great win-win and just make sure every time you're doing these interviews, typically they're going to ask, where can we connect with you? That's where you talk about your freebie. So you can really use that to build your email list. Oh yes, yes, yes. Always, always, always. Yeah, I do. I'm really happy with my freebie right now. I finally got my CBD freebie up and it's on my website and I am, I'm finally really happy with it. It took me a few tries. (laughs) No, it's gorgeous. Yeah. It's so nice. Cool. So YouTube creating content. And I want this to be every week and trust me, your content, it doesn't have to be perfect and like academically written or anything. Cause I know you, and I know that you want everything to be perfect, but I also know you want to grow a great business and you got to just be okay with it being 80% good enough. It doesn't have to be a hundred percent perfect. Okay. Okay. It's, you know, it really surprises me that I'm so um, uptight about my content, but it's, Cause I'm, I'm a, I'm a tree hugger. I'm a free loving person, but when it comes to like work, it needs to be perfect. It needs, you know, I need to, it needs to be legit. So I have to to get over that and just 80% is good enough. And I want you to just put it out there in the world because by you holding on to this perfectionism, it's, there's so many people out there that need what you have and they're not able to get access to it. And so it's like, you're leaving them stranded because you're not putting out your genius into the world. Thank you. Thank you. I will, I will work on that every week, every week. And I want you to actually share your blog posts or whatever it is that you're doing in activate. So we can really give you feedback, hold you accountable and see that you're really doing it. Okay. I will, I will do that. And that is my number one needle mover I need to be doing right now. Like I, I know that and I sit down to do it and I go, I I don't know, you know, and I end up getting, walking around and doing something else. I'm like, what am I doing? You know? (laughs) So I want this to be your Monday morning thing. Okay. Monday morning, when you sit down to work, this is what you do. So you have like a two hour block. If it takes you longer than three hours to do this, 
you're, you're putting too much into it. <laughs> it doesn't need to take three hours. Okay. So you give yourself set a timer for an hour, get her done, take a five minute break, then come back another hour. Boom. You're done. Got it. Yeah. And I actually enjoy writing. I really, I mean, when I was in college, my, my teacher, my journalism teacher at WKU was like, you need to be, you need to be a writer. She's like, you, you really ought to think about being a journalist. You would be fantastic at it. And so just getting back into the habit, like, I know I can do it. It's yep. just recreating that habit of writing. For sure. Okay. Um, let's see, what else do I have here? I guess a long-term, like I'm trying to, I have a hard time picturing my long-term goal. Like, do I really want to focus on selling my products or, you know, do I really want to grow like a national brand or do I really want to be more in the education field? Like, or how can can't I you do it all? Why can't think- you sell your product? I mean, it's just multiple income streams. And we see with coronavirus right now with people losing jobs and just like people, it's just disappearing how important that is. And that's one of the main focuses that we're doing with Inactivate is helping you create those multiple income streams. And so, yes, I want you to sell your products. Your products are amazing. But I also want you to think like, what else could you offer? Because, yeah. and that's where the educational piece comes in. Yes. Yes, I need I need to start with the with the blog. I mean, like people don't realize that CBD actually helps with immune systems. No, I mean I didn't know that. And that right now, people are stressing out about like having low immunity, right? Yeah. Yes. Oh my gosh! So you need to do a blog post right now of how to like increase your immune system, and it could be top five ways to increase your immune system right now. And one of the ways is with CBD. Mm-hmm. That'll be. There you go. There's your content for the week. Yay. <laughs> awesome. What is the, okay. So on my, on my launch, um, I'm building up, you know, and I've, I've got my, my runway. I'm trying to plan out, um, obviously the weekly lives. I want to do one weekly live on essential oil education, one weekly live on CBD education. And that way I'm, you know, got both camps taken care of. Sometimes it's the same camp. Sometimes it's separate camps. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to figure out, do I need to do a webinar at the end? You know, I don't know if I should do like a one hour webinar, if I should do a 30 minute webinar, um, that leads into the launch and then how long to leave that card open. So are you going to do webinar five day challenge? Have you decided? I haven't decided either one. Um, webinars are typically a lot less work. Hey, so five, <laughs> they're a lot less work. Um, five day challenges though. They also are really good at building community. Okay. So like, they're both great. Maybe you just start with a webinar and you do that for this one. And then next time you do a five day challenge and that way you can test them both out. I would do like three webinars, but it's the exact same webinar. It's just different days and times. Okay. So maybe you do like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, one in the morning, one at noon, one in the afternoon. And the more you do the webinars, the more, the better you'll get, the more you'll love them. And you have three, just in case you have an issue like we had yesterday on our webinar, (laughs) cause you just never know when tech is not going to be your friend. Yes. Yes. Tech, tech is challenging. It's helpful. It's very helpful when when all goes well, (laughs) when it goes well and when it does it, oh my gosh. So that's why like, just have three on the calendar that way you never know. And then some, someone might not be able to make a 10 AM, but they can make the noon, you know, you just don't know. So on the webinars, um, do you not replay those webinars? You just, are they like, if you make it, if they're kind of, thing? I would really try to get people on live okay. and, um, if people ask for it, you can send out a replay. I wouldn't like announce that there's going to be a replay because okay. statistically you're going to have much better results when people are on live with you. Okay. Okay. And then, so for that cart opening, Mm -hmm. um, three, five days, like if I, I would do five days. Okay. And then with that five day open cart, you're doing, you could do an encore webinar. Maybe you could do, um, a Facebook live Q and a. So every day that cart is open, you want to have something to keep people engaged. Okay. 
typically you're going to see the most sales on the day cart opens and the day cart closes. And in between, that's where you want to have like a 48 hour fast acting bonus, something that expires, um, giving people a reason to actually purchase when cart is open, like in that weird in between. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to figure out a, um, a big ticket item for me, like how, I don't know if I should put together a bundle of products. I don't know if I should offer like a, a one hour VIP where they get to, you know, ask me all their questions. You know, hi, TJ. <laughs> she said hi. <laughs> Do you want to say hi on the microphone? Hi. How are you, sweetie? <laughs> Okay, so I, if you do a bundle of products, just know your profit margin isn't going to be as high as if you did something like coaching. And so could you offer something where it's like you do a private in-depth session with somebody and then eventually as that becomes more popular, as like working with you becomes more popular and doing these sessions, could you train somebody and have them do it? So you're not trading time for money necessarily. Yeah. Yeah. I, I definitely have several people who want to know, you know, they're like, I want to work for you. Like, I want you to teach me all the things and I will work for you. And I'm like, well, okay, I'm not, I'm working on it. You know, I'm not quite there yet Yeah. to get my own system smooth before yeah. I can train someone to do what I do. So what you could do within the course is you sell the course and then you have like a VIP track where they get private time with you. Okay. And that's something that we're offering in Pin With Purpose right now. Um, the next time we do a live webinar, it's going to be, um, they can actually get, we're having either Helen or Courtney doing where they're doing a coaching session with Pin With Purpose students. Um, and that way, like these are people that are crushing it on Pinterest. They're doing so well. So we're really able to support our Pin With Purpose students that decide to do that private coaching route, but it's not taking my, my private time. Right. Right. And they are both amazing. I've worked with both They're of those so students. good. Yeah. So like, I know for sure that my students, they'll be in such good hands. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Awesome. Yeah. yeah my, my pins are going way up. Like I finally, finally locked down and I've been working with Helen and my, my Pinterest boards are finally being built and they're, you know, finally getting the pins. Now I just have to get my blog going smoothly. So I have more things to pin. <laughs> so cool. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. Yeah. I think, um, I think I had a six in the first month I had a growth of, I think 600%. So cool. <laughs> we just need more content now. Yes. Yes. Okay. And, um, it seems like there was, I had one other question. Okay. That might, that might be it. Oh, I'm excited. I, I know. Going. I can't wait. Um, I guess one other, one other quick thing. So if like, if, if some, what would catch your attention about CBD? Like I'm, I'm trying to figure out like what it is that I guess I really need to, I feel like I might need to do market research again. Like oh, I, yeah. and this on. is something I'm always doing. Really? Yeah. Okay. Like don't stop the market research. Like always, always, always do it. Yeah. Is there, is there a fast and easy way to do market research? <laughs> um, so, I mean, if you're brand new, it's like looking at book reviews on Amazon, joining Facebook groups, seeing what people are saying. If you have any friends that you think would be a good quality client, you could ask them to do a short interview. What we do right now is um, when people request to join our Facebook group, they have to answer a few questions. And one of those is like, what's your biggest struggle when it comes to X? And then another way that we do it is within our email nurture sequence. We have one of the emails actually asking to respond back and tell us what your biggest struggle is. Okay. Okay. Great. But you could even get on the phone with people. I know Pat Flynn, like every month he gets on the phone with people um, that are on his email list, just randomly doing market research. That's something wow. I would love to do. I just don't have the time necessarily right now. To yeah. Do it. <laughs> right now. yeah. <laughs> I'm working a lot. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, yes, that, that sounds very good. What's your biggest takeaway from our time together today? Blogging. If, if I want to stay afloat, if I want to move forward, I really have to get my blog going. So what's and your massive action step that you're going to take? 
um, I'm going to get my calendar going again. So I realized that since the kids let out of school, my calendar went Oh, uh, yep. <laughs> it was just easy to happen. <laughs> yes. And uh, yesterday I, I had actually had a moment of like, what am I doing? What am I, why am I even doing all this? Like, it's too much. It's too much. And so I put everything away. I went for a walk with my husband and that I didn't want to go on. I was like, no, I, I have work to do. And he's, he just kind of raised his eyebrow. I'm like, you're right. That means I need to go. <laughs> so, so went for a walk, cleared my head a little bit. And I was like, okay, clarity. That's all I really need is clarity. And I just need to, you know, just get my, get my system back intact and get my block going. So. And you get that clarity when you step away. If yeah. you're working, tw- did you see the live I did in activate about like unplugging? I just saw a notification for it yesterday, but I was unplugging. <laughs> good. Okay. Good, good, good. Go back and watch that. I did that. I think on Monday, um, go watch that. Cause it's so important. If you're working 24 seven, you're not going to be the creative Michelle that I know that you can be, and you're going to end up burning out. Yes. Yes. I, I was feeling that a little bit yesterday. And yeah. so um, today I felt, I really felt refreshed, you know, and then when we had this call today, I was like, I was like, focus, get your, you know, I wanted to have my questions ready. I wanted to be able to, I wanted this to be a needle mover, you know, for me to get back on track. So yeah, it very much has been. Thank you. Yes. Awesome. Okay. So where can everyone connect with you? Well, I have a Facebook group and I recently renamed it because I had this little boom, um, making pie with CBD and essential oils and pie is positivity, imagination, and encouragement. Those are the three things that really helped me get through tough times. That's how I helped my mom get through cancer and leukemia or, you know, leukemia and a bone marrow transplant. So like, that's really, I want to incorporate that into my brand. And so I've got a Facebook group. Um, and then, um, jubileewellness.com is my website. And I also have a regular Facebook page, Jubilee of Wellness. Actually, everything is Julie Wells. <laughs> so, so what's the freebie? I want you to get in the habit when someone asks you, where can, where can we connect with you? What's your free offer that you can give people? Uh, if you go to my website, jubileofwellness.com, you can get a free guide to CBD, how to use CBD for pain and stress relief. Perfect. Okay. So that, I want you to like memorize that little bit. So every time okay. you're being interviewed, that's where you're directing people. Gotcha. Building that email list. Yay. Cool. Well, thanks for being on. It's always so much fun getting to work with you and see you grow. And I can't wait to see where you're going to be when you really implement um, taking massive action with creating content on a consistent basis. Thank you, Rachel. I appreciate it. Yay.